Hello and welcome to In Depth. My name is Aditi Nagpal Girodra. Excellence in science is a concept that India has been familiar with since Vedic times. And women have been an active part of this quest for knowledge. The world over, women scientists have been in the forefront of groundbreaking research across. But despite their remarkable discoveries, globally, they still represent just 29% of researchers. In India, the number is even lesser. Globally, only 3% of the Nobel Prizes for Science have been awarded to women. And only 11% of senior research roles are held by women. This year, National Science Day is both an attempt to acknowledge their contribution to science and also to encourage increased participation in the field. In in-depth today, we focus on the achievements of the women scientists who were felicitated by President Coven today and his message for women scientists in India. We also take a look at what is preventing women from taking up science. The theme for National Science Day this year is Women in Science. To mark the day, an event was organized at the Vigyan Bhavan in New Delhi. On the occasion, President Ramnath Kovind felicitated women scientists and also launched three new initiatives for gender advancement and equality in our academic and R&D institutions. National Science Day is celebrated in India every year on the 28th of February to commemorate the discovery of the Raman effect. It is also the day when Indian scientist C.V. Raman won the Nobel Prize in Physics. The theme this year for National Science Day is Women in Science, to appreciate the contributions of women in the field of science. Speaking on the subject, President Ramnath Kovind expressed concern over the low numbers of women in the area of science and technology. He said, women comprise only 15% of the workforce in research and development, compared to the global average of 30%, according to our National Task Force report. The President recalled how women scientists played a critical role in ISRO's Mars Orbiter mission known as Mangalyaan. Ladies and gentlemen, on today's occasion, I am also delighted to launch three new initiatives for gender advancement and equality in our academic and R&D institutions. The first is called Gender Advancement for Transforming Institutions, that is GATI. It will assist the progress made by participating institutions in gender advancement based on well-defined parameters. The second initiative is an online portal for science and technology resources for women. It will provide information on government schemes, scholarships, fellowships, career counselling and details of subject area experts from various disciplines. The third initiative called Vigyan Jyoti is to create a level playing field for the meritorious girls in high schools to pursue science, technology, engineering and mathematics in higher education. The President also added that in order to encourage women to take to higher studies in science, he had substantially enhanced the representation of women in central universities. He also gave away prizes to women scientists who made unprecedented contributions in the field of science. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu also maintained that remarkable contributions by the scientific community has improved the well-being of human beings. He also urged all scientists and researchers to use science and technology to make people's lives comfortable and happier. Prime Minister Narendra Modi saluted the talent and tenacity of Indian scientists on the occasion of National Science Day. He said the government is making numerous efforts to create a better environment for research and innovation in the country. Also speaking on the occasion, Science and Technology Minister Harshwardhan urged scientists to join national endeavour to give solutions to problems arising in different spheres. We made some outstanding progress in the field of weather and climate in recent years. Our forecast accuracy for tropical cyclones has been comparable with global benchmark. Sir, 
the new India would bring newer challenges. I call upon the scientists all over the country to join the national endeavor to find science and technology-led solutions to the problems to meet the challenges of the 21st century. According to a 2018 fact sheet prepared by UNESCO on women in science, only 28.8% of researchers are women. It defines researchers as professionals engaged in the conception or creation of new knowledge. In India, the number stands at 13.9%. UNESCO data from 2014 to 16 shows that only around 30% of female students select STEM, science, technology, engineering and mathematics related fields in higher education. The data said broadly women showed a preference for arts. However, female enrollment in science streams rose significantly from 2010-11 to 2015-16. With inputs from Aruna Thakur, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. It is a question often asked, why are there so few women in science? The answers are many, ranging from gender stereotypes to the traditional perception of a woman's role in society and so on. But increasing women in science is no longer just an option. It's a necessity. For science, just as any other sphere in modern life, desperately needs a gender perspective. The entry and retention of women in science and technology has been a matter of concern the world over. Against a global average of 30%, only 15% of the Indian research and development workforce are women. But when it comes to higher education in STEM, which means science, technology, engineering and maths, women are not a minority in India. They make up as much as 40% of undergraduates in science. There is actually a rise in the enrollment of women in graduate programs in pure sciences from 7.1% in 1950-51 to 40% in 2009. 25 to 30% 30 of science PhDs are women. In India in particular, for a long time we've promoted science. We don't really have, unlike what everybody else says, I don't think we have a shortage of women in science. We have a shortage of working women. I think that if we were able to support women to work throughout their careers, not with long breaks, we would start to see many more women in science. If you look at where we are in schools, our girls do well in science. In colleges, our girls enter scientific fields, maybe not so much physics and mathematics, but certainly in other fields of science, you see lots of girls. The problem comes once they start working, the attrition rates become very high. The leaky pipeline that everybody talks about happens because we don't support women to stay within the pipe rather than to get out of it. So why does India have so few women scientists? Given that more and more women do take up science for degrees, the conclusion is that few of them go on to pursue scientific careers. According to a Niti Aayog research report, some of the few recurring reasons for this could be the need to devote themselves to taking care of the family or a change in the location of the job or the commitment that needs to be made to the job in terms of time or outright family objection. Time it happens that women they take up science and then they do they they leave everything and sit back at home and become ho homemaker. Uh, but for them, particularly if you look, particularly in medical science, if I talk about uh, women and men, they equal till 28, 30, till the time they are not married, right? Once a medical doctor, a woman gets married, she has to look after her home and then there starts this gap and it widens as they grow older. So I think that needed, needed to be bridged with lots of you know policies and uh, understanding uh, within the fraternity and in the society. So I think the uh, future is bright. The perception of woman as a homemaker who is primarily responsible for rearing a child is one stumbling block that women face in all professions. But when it comes to science and research, there are several other challenges as well. For one, it is rapidly changing and challenging field. 
knowledge is constantly being updated in many different directions which means that for a researcher taking even a short break for marriage or childbirth could end up making her work irrelevant also science has been a non traditional role for women with the perception that it is not a profession meant for them given that they have fewer mentors and more male colleagues gender bias is a factor that many women acknowledge make science not a level playing field notwithstanding the reasons for the low numbers there is a greater need now than ever for women scientists simply for the fact that women make up nearly half the population and need products that focus on their needs for instance many women suffer disproportionately more side effects from various medications because clinical trials focus on men i think there are a few small things that need to be done for the leaky pipe big programs announcing things is nice but i think a lot of things can be done on the ground to facilitate women staying in science small things child care on site you know when children are going to have school holidays can you allow women to work from home during those times could you look at them working from home one or two days a week and men have a role to play in this as well men need to support women to work men need to take part in child care men need to be there to help out when elders are ill for example so it works that we need to do some things for women but we also need to be supporting and empowering of men who can help women become what they should become Studies have found that lab animals like rats and mice that were being tested in different studies have reacted differently to male and female researchers throwing up completely different results. In short, the gender of the researchers also become a variable in the scientific study. Currently, social media sites often earn criticism for their codes being written by male programmers with inbuilt male biases. With inputs from Aruna Thakur, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. With this, we'll slip into a short break, but we'll be back soon. Stay tuned with us. What are some key legislations introduced in Rajya Sabha? Some of the key legislations introduced in Rajya Sabha are the Indecent Representation of Women Bill 1986, the Indian Succession Bill 1991, and the Marriage Laws Bill 1999. Ayushman Bhav me is bar baat verikos beans ki. Hamare saath jodenge. Allopathy visheshagya Dr. Anita Dhar. होम्योपैथी विशेषज्ञ डॉक्टर विजय कुमार आयुर्वेदिक विशेषज्ञ डॉक्टर साक्षी शर्मा तो कॉल कीजिए और पूछिए सवाल शनिवार सुबह 11 से 12 बजे सिर्फ राज्यसभा टीवी पर। हर वो आर्थिक फैसला या नीति जो तय करता है विकास की गति कैसे और क्यों लिए जाते हैं फैसले क्या होता है इनका हम पर असर देखिए अर्थ नीति शनिवार शाम साढ़े सात बजे सिर्फ राज्यसभा टीवी पर Back is still with us on in depth. The representation of women in all spheres is critical for success and growth. And to maintain gender diversity and parity, it is no different in the scientific field. Our report profiles some of the prominent women scientists who have done critical work in science and technology in India. Across research institutions and universities in India, women make up just 15 to 20 percent of the faculty. but they also include many who have beaten odds and shattered stereotypes and glass ceilings 
Indian women scientists have worked on an array of complex problems in fields ranging from quantum computation to paleoecology. These women scientists who were felicitated by President Ramnath Govind on Friday include Dr. Uma Kumar is Professor and Head of Department, Rheumatology, Old India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. Dr. Uma Kumar made an indelible mark in the area of popularizing medical science amongst masses through electronic media. Dr. Kumar has participated in medical camps in tribals and remote areas like Leh Ladakh, Kargil, Uttar Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. Dr. Uma Kumar was awarded the National Award for Outstanding Efforts in Science and Technology Communications in Electronic Medium. The whole journey started uh, long ago, maybe 15-16 years now, and when we felt that uh, it's very important for the public to know what exists for them, particularly I'm talking about medical science, and how can they maintain their health uh, and health, uh, who they can approach in case they have some problem. Uh, so we started developing uh, uh, various awareness programs, we did a teams, we went to even very uh, various areas, remote areas like Leh, Ladakh, Karga, we went to uh, remote areas in Uttarakhand and many other states. Uh, also. Uh, to various organizations which serve underprivileged population uh, like house help, maids and all. And, and there we actually try to tell them, uh, look, you have to take care of yourself. And, and there is scientific basis for everything what we are talking about. Like you have to, uh, the way you sit, the way you work, what you eat what you breathe, uh, there is a scientific basis and when we are able to convince to them then significant proportion of those individuals they change their practice. So that is how we work. Dr. Shweta Rawat, a scientist E from Defence Institute of Physiology and Allied Sciences at DRDO. Dr. Rawat and her team developed a female specific full body protector to safeguard female troops deployed in riot control action. This gear was developed in collaboration with Rapid Action Force using ergonomic design principle based on anthropometric dimensions specific for female troops. I am very lucky. I was always motivated to do better and uh, fortunately our work is also towards female. We have developed, a, we have designed and developed a female full body protector that is uh, specially designed for females who are engaged in roid control situation. So uh, I am I'm feeling more happy that uh, we have developed specially something for females who are like us, who are protecting us. and. Uh, Till now there is no protector available for them and this is the first of its kind and uh, in near future you will see them wearing our protector and uh, we have named it Prabala so we are happy that our Prabala will be saving Sabla. Dr. K. Geeta Rani, an assistant professor, Department of Inorganic and Physical Chemistry at Indian Institute of Sciences in Bangalore, Karnataka. Dr. Geeta Rani is an inorganic chemist and her research focuses mainly on the development of cost-effective earth abundant, less toxic based metal catalyst or main group catalyst for the synthesis of organoborons. She was also awarded with SERB Women Excellence Award. Dr. Deepa Aghashi, Assistant Professor, Reader F, National Center for Biological Sciences, Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, Bangalore, Karnataka. Dr. Deepa Aghashi is a biologist working at the interface of evolutionary biology ecology and molecular biology. She was a second women scientist who was awarded the SERB Women Excellence Award by the President on National Science Day. Dr. Shalini Gupta, an Associate Professor, Department of Chemical Engineering, Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. Dr. Gupta has successfully led the development of technology SeptiFlow TM, which offers fast and affordable SA for point-of-care diagnosis and treatment of bacterial septicemia which is one of the biggest in-hospital killers worldwide. This has led to the incubation of startup NanoDX Healthcare Private Limited. She is pursuing unconventional approaches to design novel biosystems for medical diagnosis, drug delivery and biomaterials fabrication on a chip. President Ramnath Kovind awarded her national award for young women showing excellence through application of technology for societal benefits. Chris Felshia, PhD scholar from Central Leather Research Institute in Chennai, was awarded augmenting writing skills for articulating research by the president for a popular science story entitled Baki, the fight for our planet, 
which has been selected for AWSAR award. She is pursuing her research on microbial mediated management of phenol and its derivatives in aqueous and soil phase and approach using free and encapsulated cells. Dr. Joyita Sarkar, postdoctoral fellow from Savitribai Phule University in Pune, pursuing her research on development of novel strategy for stem cells differentiation to hepatocyte using combined approach of epigenetic modification and 3D cell culture scaffold for applications in pharmaco and toxicological studies. Her popular science story entitled Coming Soon Animal Model Free System for Pharmaceutical Testing has been selected for AWSAR award. While some of the greatest scientists and mathematicians have been women, they remain underrepresented in comparison to the male counterparts in highest studies involving science as well as among the top scientific achievers. However, the government has taken several steps to encourage women. With inputs from Aruna Thakur, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. It's obvious that women have made huge contributions in the field of science, be it physics, chemistry or medicine. But when it comes to recognizing their work and awarding them, they lag far behind. This can be gauged from the fact that of the over 600 Nobel Prizes that have been given in the sciences, only 20 have gone to women. And this is not only about the early years when women had to fight for their place in society. Even in the last 10 years, only four women have won the Nobel Prize, two in medicine and one each in physics and chemistry. When the Nobel Prizes for Chemistry, Physics and Medicine were awarded last year, once again, as is the case most of the time, they went to men. That is despite the steps the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences took to be more gender inclusive. Efforts to diversify Nobel winners have been slow and there is a long history to overcome. Of the more than 600 Nobel Prizes that have been given out in the sciences, only 20 have gone to women. In fact, in the last 10 years, from 2010 to 2019, only four women have won the Nobel, two in medicine and one each in physics and chemistry. When Donna Strickland was awarded the Nobel for her work on lasers, she became the first woman to receive a Nobel for physics in 55 years and only the third woman ever to earn a Nobel for physics. The first being the French physicist Marie Curie in 1903 and German-born American physicist Maria Gopert Meyer in 1963. In a field where women have to fight to prove their worth as being equal to their male colleagues, it's no wonder then that only a few have been able to fight the bias and advance in the field of science. Some of that is actually a lack of recognition of the work that women did do. You could have a lab that had, you know, 10 men and 2 women and the contribution of the women will be wiped out from any record whatsoever. We know multiple examples where women should have got the Nobel Prize but didn't. I hope that will change in the future. Increasing recognition for women is going to be an important way of showing other women that it can be done. One of the things that I was told very recently, which I think is very good advice for young women, is record what you are doing. Don't let other people take the credit for ideas that you thought of or work that you did. But here are a few who have broken the very high glass ceiling of the field. Mary Curie was the first woman to win the prize when she won the Physics Nobel in 1903. She was followed by Irene Joliot Curie who won the Chemistry Nobel in 1935. She shared the prize with her husband jean Frédéric Joliot Curie for their discovery of artificial radioactivity. In 1947, Gertie Teresa Corey became the third woman to win a Nobel Prize when she won it for her work in medicine, the first woman to win in the category. Gertie Corey and her husband Carl Corey proposed the Corey Cycle, a hypothetical model of how the body uses chemical reactions to break down carbohydrates. The next woman Nobel winner in science came over 15 years later in 1963 when Maria Gopert Meyer won the prize for physics. German-born Gopert Meyer is known for the unit for the two-photon absorption cross-section, which is named after her. 
She developed the nuclear shell model, a mathematical model for the structure of atomic nuclei. For this, she shared the 1963 Nobel Prize for Physics with J. Hans D. Jensen and Eugene Paul Weiner, the first woman to receive the award in 60 years. In 1964, Dorothy Crawford Hodgkin was awarded the Chemistry Nobel. Her notable achievements include discovery of the three-dimensional structures of many biomolecules using X-ray crystallography, using which she confirmed the structure of penicillin in 1945. Her work on mapping vitamin B12 earned her the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1964. Rosalind Sussman Yalo won the Medicine Nobel in 1977 for her development of radio immunoassay or RIA, a technique that measures tiny quantities of various substances in liquids, notably insulin in human blood. Barbara McClintock won the Medicine Nobel in 1983 for one of her many discoveries, transposition, which is the theory that genes are responsible for turning on and off physical characteristics. She was the first woman to win the prize unshared in medicine. Rita Levi Montalcini won the Medicine Nobel in 1986. Her study of nerve growth, especially the isolation of nerve growth factors, proteins that guide the growth, and maintenance and survival of nerve tissue won her the prize. The Medicine Nobel has gone to eight more women since Montalcini won the prize in 1986, including Gertrude B. Elian, who won it in 1988. Christiane Nuslin Wolhard in 1995, Linda B. Buck in 2004, Elizabeth Blackburn and Carol V. Grider in 2009, and May Britt Moser in 2014. In 2009, Ada E. Yonath won the Chemistry Nobel for her work on protein biosynthesis and peptide bond formation. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. So with this, it's a wrap on this edition of In-Depth. Thank you so much for joining us.